please join me in welcoming Brian from Humu. So, who am I? Uh, this one goes out to all the Dr. Seuss fans in the audience. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, I began my career in security, protecting ones and zeros. Back in 2002, before cyber was a thing, and clouds were just something about which you might sing. From the Department of Defense to banks and universities, then on to Netflix to get paid to watch movies. I led Netflix's implementation of zero trust, for which most people think beyond corpse and must. Now sit back and get comfy, I'll spin you a yarn of how to use one pair of hands to protect your business from harm. Oh, thank you. Uh, so what have you gotten yourself into? Let's say you're taking over a security program or starting a security program from scratch at a small company. You're maybe a security engineer leveling up. Maybe you're a manager whose role has expanded. Or maybe you're the poor IT guy or girl that drew the short straw. So first, congratulations. Uh, also, second, I'm sorry. So on the plus side, you get to do things from scratch, quote unquote, do it the right way. Uh, but just remember that the right way is very subjective. So two years from now, people could be looking back and think, well, what idiot did this? And you'll have to own up and say, oh, sorry, that was me. Um, be ready to wear many hats at a, at a startup. You're definitely going to do a ton of different roles, uh, definitely outside of security. So don't, don't scope your role too narrowly at first. It'll definitely narrow naturally over time. For example, I'm kind of handy, so I spent a lot of time fixing the coffee machine. Luckily, now we have a third party that does that. Uh, let's see, ideally you're not going to want to be just a heads down security engineer, you're definitely going to need those skills, but you also want a critical social skills, shall we say, because you're going to be interacting with a lot of different teams around the company, engineering, IT, legal, sales, uh, leadership, ideally. Um, so remember that you're not just setting up security controls and all the techie stuff, you definitely have to start setting security culture. Uh, how do you want your security team to interact with people? How do you want them to interact with you? How do you want security to be valued in the company? So why do you exist? As the Wu-Tang Clan says, cream or cash rules everything around me. Uh, you need to help that the business get that dollar dollar bill, y'all. So the three most important things I do for the business are making sure we don't get hacked, uh, dealing with compliance, and filling out secure, incoming security questionnaires. They all either directly or indirectly bring in money. So you're either winning customers, you're closing those deals, you're meeting legal requirements to stay in business, or you're keeping the lights on. And by the way, uh, just because it doesn't directly bring in money, always remember to protect your customer's data because it's the right thing to do. Uh, keep in mind that you're an advisor, you're not the police. People, uh, the people can, in the business can take your advice or just leave it. You, you need to understand what's important for the business and not just you. So maybe you have an urgent volume to fix or you maybe you've got a shiny new tool to buy, but the business might weigh the risk benefit and, or the cost benefit and say, eh, it's really not worth it, sorry. You have to be okay with that and move on. Uh, you might think security to startup isn't really that big of a deal because, oh, we're too small to get attacked, but no, there's, I mean, as we know, there's spray and pray attacks, but also even just on LinkedIn, there's plenty of information to, to uh, launch spear phishing attacks against you. We've seen that definitely. We're a small company. Depending on your customer data and the industry you're in, you may start getting more targeted attacks. Uh, I like to put out the, the, the equation of startup minus security equals easy money for attackers because you're gonna, space, you're gonna uh, face all the same attacks like ransomware, extortion, data theft, all the sort of stuff that the big companies do, but attackers know that you do not have a security team or maybe if you're lucky, one person. So strategy, the first part here. Uh, so first step is finding a company with management that supports security. You definitely need buy-in from the top to get anything done, otherwise you are gonna start crying very soon. Uh, ask, for, you know, w during the interview process, start asking some questions like, who's the position to report to? Can you talk to the CEO about your strategy? What's the budget? Uh, what's the timeline for, the, or like, how big does the team wanna get, and, and uh, what are the goals, and what's the timeline, that sort of thing. Basically, you're trying to figure out, are they trying to check a box for security, or do they actually deeply care about security? Ideally, the company wants to start caring about security early because, as we all know, bolting on security at the end for either the business or the product is going to take a lot more time and effort and money. Example would be like C becoming CC, uh, CCPA and GEPR compliant, trying to bolt those features onto a product after the fact are going to be a big, huge pain. And then before putting in the controls and processes and procedures, always ask why. So take a step back and, and think, okay, well, what are we trying to do here? So what's the reasoning behind it? How will it actually benefit us? Is there a newer, better way to do it? Which is one of the benefits of starting from scratch. You can, you can do that. So for example, traditionally people have said, you know, hey, we need crazy long passwords that are rotated every 90 days. But then you take a step back and you realize, oh, actually we can take care of this issue and we can take care of a bunch of different attacks, account takeover over stuff, but just by requiring uh, more memorable passwords, but 2FA. Uh, you know, you you might traditionally buy a fancy whiz bang firewall with a bunch of security features, I won't mention names, uh, but then you st take a step back and you realize, oh, actually we can solve all these problems and eliminate a whole bunch of other problems by going with Beyond Corp and just a simple firewall. 
So now on to the strategy or the uh, the, to or the the meat of the strategy, if you or the tofu if you prefer. If this Chromebook would scroll, uh, oh there we go. Um, so you've got one pair of hands. So how do you make sure that you are spending your limited amount of time on the most critical things? So I've created one simple, easy to remember acronym there for you. Um, first part is finding what matters most to the business, the valuables, the crown jewels. Talk to the, the founders, the heads of each group, what data, applications, processes, procedures matter most to the, to the company, to things like customer data, intellectual property, bank accounts, in, uh, internal apps, blah, 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 blah. And then find what laws you have to comply with uh, and certifications that the businesses wants in addition to those legal requirements. That's going to determine what, determine what frameworks you have to use, what controls you're going to put in place, policies, and generally how fast and loose you can play with security. Um, dealing with compliance might be one of, the reason, one of the big reasons why your position was created in the first place, so a lot of people hate to uh, admit that, but there will likely be some, some compliance parts of your job. My recommendation is outsource as much of the compliance stuff as you can, like uh, gap assessments and audits and getting policies, um, but realize you're still going to be doing a bunch of the heavy lifting putting that in place. And then find out what level of risk the business is comfortable accepting. So getting a general feel from the co-founders, like do they want to move faster and accept more risk, or do they want to go move a little sl more slowly and dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Some basic examples would be, you know, if there's a medium risk of exposing customer data with this new feature, but the new feature is going to close a giant deal, uh, you know, do they want to move forward with that, or do they want to fix the, the issue first before moving on? Or do you block installation of software on employees' laptops, or do you trust them to use their best judgment and um, and let them install whatever they want? Or do you have uh, air gap systems for your most sensitive data? Uh, slight tangent here related to risk, third party risk, do you really know where your data is? So you might think you have a small AWS and GCP or GCP footprint, but your data could be going to all kinds of places thanks to uh, G Suite plugins, Slack plugins, Chrome extensions, all that sort of stuff. So I recommend turning on uh, OAuth whitelisting from the beginning so you can start getting a handle on this sort of stuff, especially things that have access to G Drive because that's where a ton of sensitive business information is these days. Uh, definitely don't take more, to, uh, more than like a day to answer those requests, otherwise you're going to be holding up the business, which pisses off a lot of people, which I'll go into a little bit later. And then uh, take an inventory of applications and, and uh, integrations. Try to gather some security information on them. Good luck if you're a small company trying to get any sort of response out of security at whatevercompany.com. Uh, and then create a basic risk spreadsheet so you can track your assets and your risk. I do something basic like likelihood of, of compromise times impact divided by remediation effectiveness equals your risk, just to so get a basic idea. You can get fancier with something like CVSS if you want. Uh, remember that third party and subprocessor inventory is kind of important for GDPR and CCPA. You definitely need to know where your data is going and who your subprocessors are. Back to a little more of the strategy, threats. So finding your, uh, your cyber threats and ideally your physical threats as well. You can use MITRE's attack framework uh, for some ideas. You can also use Verizon's DBI report. Shout out to Alex Pinto. I know you're in the audience riding a capybara somewhere. Uh, and then you can use a CVSS for ranking them. Unauthorized access to data, data being held ransom, using trusted access to access your customer or attack your customers. Those, those are some of the big ones. Talk to the co-founders and get their input. See if they agree with you. See if they've got some other ideas. See which are the biggest threats. Next, you're going to start setting culture, uh, because security isn't just about technology. It's definitely the people, too. I'll get more into that in a, in a couple slides. And then good security culture makes it easier to integrate into the business, start building trust, and uh, getting into those important teams and workflows. And I'll get more into that, too, in a second. And the last part of the strategy here. So then comes every engineer's favorite part, the uh, policies. Uh, you might be able to actually skip these if you're lucky, if you don't have a bunch of laws and certifications to comply with. But you may actually have large customers that demand you have certifications. So you're back to square one. Uh, I recommend getting templates from whoever you're outsourcing compliance to. Also, uh, if you want to go the cheap route, which might take a little more effort, you can go to most universities' websites. All their policies are typically public. Works smarter, not harder. Harder, copy and paste. Uh, and let's see, then of course tweak them to fit your business. So do you really need that 10 page password policy or can you just get away with you know, a, a paragraph? You don't really need to go crazy. And then lastly, you start putting the controls in place. This is where all of us engineering types are most comfortable. Uh, so things like 2FA, anti-malware, inventory, access control, yada, yada, yada. You're going to select those controls based on these inputs you've gotten in the previous steps and select what's right for the business. So you know, you're probably not going to have 3FA on an air gap network if you're just selling cat emojis. So keep it simple. That's one of my guiding principles that I'll go into in a minute. And then iterate, put the basics in place, and then improve as you go along. So if you haven't been in a small company before, uh, you might be most comfortable with like, hey, I need to get this done 100% right the first time. But uh, you, you're going to realize that you know, you're know you going to want to get like 80% there at a startup because you're going to be moving in tons of directions with one pair of hands. And then uh, come back and finish the 20% later. Uh, remember that perfect is the enemy of the good. Slide 10. 
Uh, guiding principle. So guardrails, not gates, is a, a saying I got from Jason Shannon from my time in Netflix. So people hate hearing no. It definitely gets in their way, prevents them from doing their job. Uh, you become a source of their anger. So they won't want to come work with you again. They'll definitely try to go around you. So don't hold up the business unless it's something critical. Let people get their jobs done. And like I said, you're here to serve as an advisory, not the, the military. And be wanted, not feared. You know, do you want to be this feared security person or do you want to, the one that people love to work with? Which one is going to get better results for you? Uh, definitely create an, a, an approachable and positive security culture. People are going to want to bring you their questions and issues rather than you having to go and dig them up, which takes a lot, a lot more time. I'll go into that in a little bit. And then keep it simple, like I mentioned here. So complex policies and procedures are, are going to be hard to maintain. And there we go, scroll. Um, and they're definitely going to annoy people to the point of going around them. So uh, choose short policies, choose painless security reviews, choose platform as a service, choose zero trust, choose life, choose train spotting references. Keep it simple, and you're going to remove an entire class of security concerns. Like platform as a service has almost no infrastructure to administer or main or and secure. Uh, zero trust is going to you know eliminate a bunch of traditional network security architecture uh, and and network security concerns. So you've got one pair of hands. So let AWS and GCP take care of all those old school security issues for you. Shameless plug for my Enigma talk from a couple years ago on zero trust and Netflix. Uh, and then make people self-reliant so they can be your hands, your hand, or sorry, your eyes and ears because you can't be everywhere at once. So give them the tools, uh, you know, to be on that paved path that's uh, inside the guardrails and the education to use them because you won't have the time to be around and be involved in every single security decision. And we start getting into cu culture here. How well you integrate into the business is uh, how, you, how we, well you integrate security into the business is going to depend on the principles you set, like the and also the culture and how your you and your future team interact with people. So be transparent. You know, if, if you're going to install something on someone's laptop, the first thing they're going to be like, like, what's what's going on here? Are you spying on me? It's like, no, we're here. this thing is going to catch malware for you. It's going to it's going to protect you. It, there's literally no way it can spy on you. Here's the manual if you want to double check. Just having some some rapport with the person, showing them what's going on, and and being transparent on, on your decisions. Appreciate people, so say thank you. It's simple, but it, it goes a long way. Just hearing thank you in the office really goes, uh, really improves a lot of things like uh, relationships with people. Um, you know, what I do is uh, if someone has helped improve security some way, or they've reported a good phishing attack or whatever, I give a security shark award at our all, all hands meeting. So it's like an Amazon gift certificate. I'll say, hey, person X did this, thank you very much, and give them a little reward, gets, gets the word out there, keeps security in people's minds, and also says thank you to the person. And be humble, so no one works. No one wants to work with a brilliant jerk. We've all worked with brilliant jerks. Uh, I do jujitsu, and it's taught me many things. Most importantly, is that you're going to learn, of course, from people above you, and you know your peers probably, uh, ideally. Uh, but you're also going to learn from people below you. So treat everyone with respect. Treat everyone as a pro that you can learn something from. Uh, you know, say like, hey, this area is not my area of expertise. Can you teach? Can you teach me something about this, and we can work together on this issue? It's exactly what I did with some appsec vulns we had. I can barely spell AppSec, so I went to our our, pers our head engineer and was like, hey, we've got this issue. Can you explain it to me? Can we work together? Like, how can we fix this? And the two of us worked on it together, which goes much better than just like, hey, fix this for me. Uh, feedback, so you can't improve, and you definitely should want to improve. So you can't improve in a vacuum. Ask people for feedback. Uh, see the conversation with examples like, hey, we just rolled out this tool. What do you think about it? Or we're going to do this. What do you think about that? Or in this meeting, I said this. Did I sound like a jackass? What do you think? How can I, how can I improve? Empathy, so always assume good intent. You know, people are just trying to get their jobs done. Um, you know, some traditional security person might hear like, oh, hey, person comes up to you and says, I need an FTP server right now. Like, I need to transfer this file. And you might go, whoa, a head explode. But no, take a, take a step back and realize, OK, let's dig in a little bit. This person's trying to get their job done. OK, they have this important file for the CEO or whoever. They need to transfer it now. They just didn't realize that we've got a paved path here to like get this transferred security and quick securely and quickly. Or maybe they don't have an option right now, so then you come up, you work with them to come up with a more secure solution. So always assume good intent. Uh, the little things, speak English, not techie. Uh, a couple of these points were in some of the other talks as well. Um, it definitely alienates people if you're going to talk about the lithium crystals and rotating your cables every 100,000 packets, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, If you're talking illegal, they're going to be like, what in the hell are you talking about? They're not going to want to come back and talk to you again. So um, tailor your, your level of techie to the audience. And uh, say hi in the hallway, make eye contact, just basic interpersonal skills. I mean, not just on your team, but like random people in the office. Uh, it definitely improves the, uh, the culture and, and helps get you, um, get you integrated into the company. Um, let's see. 
And also try it out in the real world, it's nice. Uh, and then the last thing on security culture is setting the elevator back down. So use your position of power at the top to help out others below you. We're never gonna increase diversity or fill hiring gaps if you don't get out there, like spend some effort trying to get out there, finding women and minorities who either work with you or outside the office, interns, recent college graduates who are trying to start their careers, invite them to conversations and projects. Invite them to industry events, try to help them, try to help them build their network, give them career advice. Uh, high school teachers definitely need people to come talk and inspire their students. You can skip fancy universities. People at uh, community colleges, high schools, and poor school districts are going to definitely appreciate it and use it a lot more. Uh, Integrating the company, socialize, so start building relationships and trust across the business. Um, you know, you, you're going to need to work with engineering for production type stuff, IT for malware and corporate type stuff, legal for contract review, uh, sales for incoming security questionnaires. Go talk to the sales team and ask how many deals have we lost because we didn't have security thing X. Um, and that'll show that you're trying to help out the security team. You can also take that number to leadership and say, hey, we need to spend a bunch of money and here's one of the reasons why. We, you know, trade off of, of costs there. Um, oh, time's really running out. Uh, and then find the, the major stakeholders and the team leaders, uh, meet with them regularly over lunch and one-on-ones, and then try to build relationships with people like I talked about. Uh, increasing the visibility, so you want to find the security issues uh, and also keep yourself visible in the eyes of, of the rest of the company. So, you know, have new employee security training, yearly security training, developer security training, go to the other teams all hands. It's like a fly on the wall to keep your finger on the pulse and hear what's going on security related there. Of course, don't over communicate because people are going to, because people are going to get uh, alert fatigue and just start ignoring you after a while. And remember to tailor the content to the specific audience. Don't blast out an email to the entire company if it only applies to half the company. And then recruit people on the other teams who are interested in securities to be your, to be your eyes and ears and potentially hands to help you fix issues and report things. Collaborate. Don't be a dictator. Don't just throw stuff over the fence. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, it's going to go much better if you say, hey, how can we work on this together rather than just like, here, please fix this problem. Um... Engagement. So we all know security is a dry topic. Like, hey, pick a strong password. Don't share your password. Don't do this. Don't do that. Uh, I like to get creative, make it a little fun. Um, here is the Security Shark Award that I hand out with the Amazon gift certificate at the All Hands meetings. Uh, when I was at Netflix, I uh, did some uh, security education posters around the office in October. This one was pushing password managers. Who doesn't love hedgehogs? The head of legal said she loved this one. Um, also, two-factor auth. Uh, I know somebody here who's attending had an icon of a sloth. Um, thank you. Uh, and then the last one, or actually a couple more slides. Uh, at our White Elephant Christmas party a couple years ago, my contribution for the gift pile was a picture of myself, which people thought was hilarious, until I told them that um, it, there was a hidden gift card in there. So they did the trading, and then eventually pulled it apart. They didn't find a gift card. So what they did, they took a while, but they eventually found out if you held the picture over heat source, the Amazon gift card was written in lemon juice, and then it appeared. The CEO loved that so much that he now hides this picture regularly around the office with another card hidden in it, a coffee card. Uh, and then if you find it, you get to hide it for the next person. People love that so much that they took my picture and then put it on um, put on t-shirts for our one of our Halloween costume competition things. And on the back, you'll see there's a bunch of letters. And if you unscrambled it, you found out where the prize was. Uh, now I have a picture of, I have a t-shirt with my picture on it, which is weird. Uh, anyway, I love wearing it around. It's great. Makes me look famous or something. Uh, and last thing, oh good, I think it's gonna work out. Uh, physical security, why would you care about physical security? Um, you know, maybe you wanna learn something new. Um, you know, really who else is gonna do it at a startup? So there's a lot of similarities with InfoSec, so you've got badges and doors for authentication and access controls. You got cameras facing ideally out uh, the external doors for after the fact monitoring. Remember, do not face the cameras in, that tends to creep people out. Uh, and likely you're not gonna have alarms because ideally people are taking their laptops home at, home at the end of the day. You've gotta be on corporate networks, so someone does plug into your network, whatever, that's nice. Uh, and then, um, you know, people also s forget to set alarms anyway, so they're kind of useless. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, and then um, other things, you know, like you're only gonna have to worry about theft for really the first few years, but as you get bigger, you might want to start investing in guards, and there could be domestic violence issues is one of the big ones that comes up, uh, targeted attacks, um, Higher, you know, as your as your uh, uh, leadership gets higher profile, maybe attacks against them, that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, I, I've heard of things like teams of doing international extractions on like big physical security teams, but don't worry about that. Really, all you have to worry about is theft, keeping the doors locked, and then auditors to satisfy uh, or cameras to satisfy the auditors and potentially like tracking down what, what got stolen. Uh, and I went a little fast because we lost some time with filling the theater, but I think I got in under the wire. Um, I don't think I have any time for questions. But I'll take softball questions outside. Uh, and then if you want to, you can add me on LinkedIn. I will be happily answer any questions via LinkedIn or just 
find me outside and ask your questions. Thank you.